So this is our last last lecture on gas power cycles. And so the end of chapter nine, we covered a lot of ground. I just want to touch on what's covered in the chapter. It's about compressible flow. It's an introduction to compressible flow. We could spend more than one lecture on this topic. Actually, there's a whole technical elective, a whole class just in compressible flow and propulsion systems. You could take that if it's offered, whenever it's offered, and spend a whole semester studying. But we're going to touch on the speed of sound, and we're going to touch on converging, diverging nozzles. First of all, there's a definition for the speed of sound. It's C is equal to, that's our symbol for the speed of sound used in this textbook, it is a square root of the rate of change of pressure with respect to density holding entropy constant. We're going to derive that equation. But before we derive that equation, let's uh, do, use that equation. Let's do this. Often we're interested in the speed of sound in air. Uh, air behaves as an ideal gas, so PV is equal to RT. But in this equation, they are using rho. What's the relationship between rho and the specific volume? Isn't uh, rho 1 over the specific volume? So you could write the ideal gas equation P over rho equal to RT. We'll use that equation again in a minute. So if we wanted to simplify and get a simple equation for the speed of sound in air, we would have to say, well, how does pressure and density change? Especially for isentropic um, processes. So for isentropic processes, so air is an ideal gas, S equal to a constant, we recall that PV to the K is equal to a constant. Here it would be P rho to the minus K is equal to a constant, or pressure is equal to the constant times the density to the K power. A little algebra there. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to take that form of pressure and stuff it into my equation. So my equation is, is that C is equal to, I'm going to do C squared for a minute, and then at the end I'll take the square root of C squared to get C, is equal to the rate of change of pressure with respect to density. And this is already holding entropy constant, so that's equal to the rate of change of the constant times density to the K power with respect to density. Well, that derivative we can do, that constant comes outside. We're left with density to the k minus 1. Well, I should put a k there too. How about uh, c times k times density to the k minus 1? Did I do the derivative okay? Yeah. And at this point, you say, well, what is that constant again? That constant is the pressure divided by density to the k. You multiply by k, you have rho to the k, and then you have 1 over rho. I'm just expanding that so I can cancel these two terms. I replaced what this c, this constant is. I guess I just realized I have a poor choice because I'm using c as a constant, and then c is the speed of sound. So maybe I should have spelled this out. C-O-N-S-T, 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 C-O-N-S-T. And then this is C-O-N-S-T, this is C-O-N-S-T. P over rho, pressure divided by density, that's equal to RT. And so we're left with K-R-T. So the speed of sound squared is K-R-T in an ideal gas, or the speed of sound in an ideal gas is the square root of K-R-T. How many people have seen this equation before? Good. I'm glad to see that many hands go up. Right. In your physics class? And even in fluids. Good. Very good. So there is a very familiar equation. Calculate the speed of sound in air at a temperature of 0 degrees C. So the temperature is 273 Kelvin, is it not? All right. So what I need is I need R because all I'm going to do is C is equal to square root of KRT. I need to know R and I need to know K. I know what temperature is. So what is K? 1.4 for air? 
All right. What is R? That's R bar divided by the molar mass, which is 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which we want to convert to these units, 287 meters squared per second squared per Kelvin. You're saying, I haven't used that. I mean, that looks very weird, but it, it's, it's just unit conversions, isn't it? And that's a, a, a good form. So let's plug it into our equation. So C, the speed of sound in air, is given by 1.4 times R, 287 meters squared per second squared per Kelvin times 273 Kelvin. Now you see the units work nicely, don't they? And when you calculate that, we pick up that C comes in around 331 meters per second. Speed of sound in air at zero degrees C. Good? All right. You could go and find on the internet a whole bunch of you know, this is the speed of sound in this different material or that different material. We just verified zero degrees C. We just got to 331 meters per second, didn't we, for the speed of sound? Notice if it's a little warmer, what does the speed of sound do? It, well, it's, it's a, C is proportional to temperature to the one-half power. If we plotted it as a function of temperature, the speed of sound doesn't go up linearly, but it, it goes up with that power of a half, t to the one half power. Okay, so it gets it's a large, larger uh, magnitude, higher speed of speed of sound in warmer air. Uh, could you calculate the speed of sound in liquids, even solids? Yeah, you you could. And uh, here are some values reported. How do we get that equation? That equation. I can't even fit the derivation in one slide. But if you look back at your physics textbook, I'm sure it's in your physics one textbook, as well as maybe in your fluids. A lot of people saw this equation in the fluids. It's probably in your fluids textbook too. Well, it's also in your thermal book. So let's quickly do this derivation. So it's a, a, a sound is basically a pressure disturbance. So we model it as a stationary fluid and it's sitting one dimensional in a cylinder and you have a piston and all of a sudden the piston abruptly changes speed and goes pop and now it's traveling at a speed it was at rest now it goes dv and so what moves off in front of it moving at, a, uh, at the speed of sound is a wave where before the wave on the right side of the wave the the speed the, sta the fluid stationary, the fluid's at rest, it has a certain enthalpy, a certain pressure, a certain density. On the back side, on the left side, after it's already passed by, it has a change, it's experienced a change in the velocity, so the velocity now is a dV. It also has a change in enthalpy, change in pressure, and change in density. So looking at it, here is the velocity plotted as a function of distance right at that wave front, which is moving. Uh, everything to the left of it has a dV velocity. Everything to the right is zero velocity. And then the pressure, just plotting it. Right there, it's a wave front. There's a little bump in the pressure on the left side. So what do we do? We have a little control volume that encloses that moving wave front. And for that control volume, we consider... Uh, fluid flowing in on the right and out on the left. It flows in with the speed of the wave front coming at it. That's why the speed here is C. And it flows out at C minus dV, the speed on the back side, the left side. It has in the enthalpy pressure density, enthalpy pressure density are changed on the left side. You do a mass balance and an energy balance, and you use a TDS relationship for properties. So the mass balance says what comes in um, the right is equal to what goes out on the left. 
Um, you expand, is, isn't the mass flow rate just rho AV? Yeah. And so the areas cancel. Cancel the areas. You, you expand the rho and the V over here on the left side, but you neglect hot terms. No, higher order terms, right? The small times the small is really, really small, so that's neglected. And you're left with this little differential equation, how the change in rho is related to the change in the speed by the speed of sound and the density. Energy balance, similarly, you have this as the enthalpy, the kinetic energy on the left side equal to what's on the right side. And you re um, eliminate higher order terms and simplify dH minus CdV is equal to zero. The TDS relation, we're going to assume it's isentropic, the standard assumption across that, that uh, wave front. And so dH minus VdP is equal to zero. So we put these three things together on the next slide. We combine the mass with the energy and that property relation. So it's like stick this dV to replace that dV in the energy. Stick this dH to replace that dH in the energy. I'll get one equation where you get C squared is equal to. Where do you, why do you get C squared? Well, this C right here is going to multiply that C right there, and so you get C squared, and you're left with dP over d rho, and again, it's for isentropic process. So you take the square root to get C is equal to square root dP d rho at constant s. QED. What we set out to show, done. Do you recall seeing that in another textbook? In your fluids? No? I bet you it's there. Probably take a look. Maybe it's there. Um, in your physics? Yeah, it's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's there in the physics book. Well, another topic is, is once you can have the speed of sound in air, you can maybe move a projectile or object slower or faster than the speed of sound in the air. That's quantified by a dimensionless Mach number. So the Mach number is the ratio of the actual speed to the speed of sound. Notice that a lot of times I like to try and write MA for Mach. Why? Because when I write Big M, guess what I'm thinking of in this textbook? Molar mass. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe they just have Big M for the Mach number. So they're recycling symbols. So you just have to pay attention, right? What are we talking about here? Oh, Big M is the Mach number. Okay. So if it's subsonic, it's below 1. The Mach number is below 1. If it's sonic, the Mach is 1. And then you have a round 1, transonic and then supersonic and even hypersonic, much greater than one. So these terms I think you're all familiar with. There are quite a few applications where you have sonic flow or sonic, you know, something's moving through air at the speed of sound, or even supersonic and hypersonic, especially if you're in, interested in uh, military applications a lot. Right? Right? Okay. Okay.